Oh, they told me not to talk to you. Okay, well. Because, uh, yeah. No, that's having something to do with us. But Yeah, I've seen the video on YouTube, so yeah. I'm a friend of Ed, so he told me not to talk. The plot thickens. Buyers at the Gordon Elson estate sale are ordered to stay away from the press. Some people have said it's strange that the estate sale for Gordon Elson was not advertised, except for a few posters. However, Upper Peninsula Breaking News discovered the estate sale, and we want you to know that this is important because Gordon Elson was the Coca-Cola king of the Upper Peninsula as he ran a successful bottling works that produced a variety of soft drinks. You see, chances are, if you were in the Upper Peninsula in the 50s to the 90s, you likely drank pop that originated at his bottling plant. Elson owned the Marquette Coca-Cola franchise until 1989, when he sold the family business that was started by relatives in the late 1800s. Elson served on the board of directors of the Peninsula Bank for just shy of three decades, including eight years as board chairman. Now, what appeared to be missing at this estate sale was Gordon Elson's most valuable Coca-Cola memorabilia. In fact, we're told a feature story was in the mining journal once, and it described Elson's Coca-Cola memorabilia alone to be worth over $1 million. Boy, we'd love to see a copy of that article. So, what happened to Elson's most valuable collectibles, and who got the proceeds? In fact, what happened to Elson's multi-million dollar fortune before and after his death? At 9 a.m. on Saturday, July 12, 2014, the doors opened on a garage that appeared to hold some memorabilia and other items listed on the poster. The estate sale was held at 601 Cooper Lake Road in Ishpeming Township. The very first people in line on that Saturday morning presumably got the first picking. And the most expensive item we could see was this cool old mini truck that had a price tag of $10,000 or the best offer. That mini Elson Bottling Works truck sparked a lot of views, but it's unknown if it's sold. The truck was only one of a few things in plain view. Another was this golf cart and lots of furniture. The buyer of items from the Elson estate sale said that they were warned not to talk to Upper Peninsula breaking news. Just tell me what you got. I got two Elson's bottles. They told me not to talk to you. Okay, well. Because, uh, yeah. No, that's having something to do with us. But yeah, I've seen the video on YouTube, so yeah. I'm a friend of Ed, so he told me not to talk he to you. Can you tell me what you picked up? It's none of your business. Get the hell out of here. Well, that's friendly attitude. Yep. To the left. Put them off. Put them off. Sure. Sir, can I ask you about that keg or whatever that big antique thing is you bought? No. Okay. Can I see that? Can you turn it this way? No? Everybody's so crabby. And we saw that some of the operations seemed to be run by Ed St. Aubin, who accosted this reporter the day before the estate sale and said he was court appointed to assist. Okay, I have Greg. every right to be here. No, you don't. You're, you're bothering you, me. Why are you attacking You're bothering me. I'm not attacking you. You what need you, to get in your you car and go. You're parked you, on the road. Here, let me take a, Let me take a picture of your license plate right, and you. Let me, that's fine. I just want to know who you are. Now you I want you off the road and out of here. I'm on... Uh, out. I know who you are. Okay, what's your name, sir? None of your business. Go well, away. Well, this is all going on the story, so... You know, you're being rude, and I don't know why. Yeah, I am. Now you're, now no. you're, now you're acting. No, Please don't I want touch you to me. go. Stop I'm not touching, touching you. Me. I'm going to call the cops and have you arrested right now. Go for it. You can shove your fucking camera right up your ass. Okay. Okay? Are you Be that way. fucking retarded? I want you out of here. You're harassing me. I don't want to even talk to you. Get away from me. Upper Peninsula Breaking News has not heard back from Marquette County Probate Court to verify St. Aubin was court appointed. We spotted the executor of the Elson estate, George Pavo of Nagani. Another player in this saga, Executor Pavo's attorney, Richard Graybill of Ishpeming. Pavo and Graybill have declined to comment as we try to shed light on what's left of the Elson estate 
and question whether any of those listed on his final will and testament will ever see a nickel. Gordon kept detailed records of the bottling industry, including fascinating photographs of a bygone era when sodas were bottled locally and an extensive collection of Coke bottles. One photograph he liked to show me was of himself as a six-year-old boy standing with the first automobile his father used to deliver soda pop in Ishpeming. He was a driving force behind many local projects, including the building of the high-rise apartments in downtown Ishpeming. Gordy paid close attention to all things Ishpeming, even carefully recording the date that the ice came off of Lake Bancroft every year since the 1940s. In recent years, Gordon was lovingly cared for in his home by Connie Brewer and Lynn Carlson and by friends who often came to take him out for coffee at Peggy Sue's and by Kate Hill, who faithfully took him to dinner at the Elks Lodge. Gordy was charitable to people and to many organizations over the years, especially to this church where he was a member and the major donor of the educational wing, which was named for his wife after her death. He was also generous to Ishpeming High School and Peterson Auditorium and Sumi College or Finlandia University. He was a lifelong member of the Ishpeming Elks Lodge 447 and the Ahmed Shriners, eventually in the veterans' home. But just eight days ago, I was sitting with Gordon, who was visiting with me, though he kept his eyes closed the entire time. Despite his pain, Gordon recited the Lord's Prayer with me. Maybe that's what faithfulness looks like. A records check shows Elson owned an expensive Florida home valued at over $600,000, reportedly purchased after his wife's death. That plush home that Elson owned in Florida sold for half a million dollars in 2009. By many accounts, Elson was devastated by the death of his wife, Catherine, in 1989, the year he ended up selling the business and franchise. As we continue our investigation, Upper Peninsula Breaking News is checking into Elson property, vehicles, stocks and bonds, collectibles, and any other valuables he owned. We are also seeking information from the Michigan Attorney Grievance Commission, the Michigan Attorney Discipline Board, the Michigan Judicial Tenure Commission, and the Michigan Attorney General's Office. You see, Michigan's Attorney General's Office has interjected itself into Elson's final will and testament. Greg Peterson, Upper Peninsula Breaking News.